The woman in the subway, in the quake and turn of the tunnel and the train, brought forth his resentment, awakened him from the Midwest slumber in his eyes. The mundanity, the dark, endless tunnel where survival ceases to be a thrill. She was essence and chance, like the style of her hair. She was 24-7. Like Bella, she was live. No one can underestimate her, he thought. Only she had him, Bella. Nights alone when he ought to be writing. His pride had waxed in the five years past, and hers subsided. Her humility and vulnerability attracted him. But the differences, the opposition, ended there. What made her all that he wanted in a woman, what sealed his love for her, was that she was tormented by her own existence. He had a parallel personal torment. He wanted to live the simple, honest life, have a wife and raise a family, but seemed to have strayed from that path. What he loved in her, he saw in himself. Neither was able to have faith that the extraordinary within them could shine through ordinary ways. Her pain was his. They were of an American generation too far removed from the country's forefathers to know the passion of revolution, too far from open land to know the endurance and cathartic suffering of the pioneer, too distant from those who persevered through droughts and economic depression between the decimation wreaked by world wars. Even recent history was vacuous. The films and literature of the day often gave them the idea that the late 60s and early 70s were glamorous times of willful recreational drug use and the birth of rock and roll, rather than a country's necessary reaction to the sacrifice of its youth to Red Scare paranoia in a game called Dominoes. The passion of protest was admirable yet lost 20 years later upon these children born after the last helicopter evacuated Vietnam. A time was coming the global entities wavering the avarice flag held sovereignty and had to be dug in against and battled like selfish dictators. But that time was only a road mirage and airwaves of lucrative heat and oil. Her pain was his, Bella, the pain of ennui and inexperience, searching for outlet. The pain itself was the simple element that made their lives worth living. What had man ever achieved in the absence of hardship and suffering? Why do individuals, cults, organized movements, and empires crest and fall? Because the human condition is one of always moving toward peace and solace and comfort, and those who suffered in their youth tend to feel due in mature years. Yet the rest and comfort once achieved can make them weak and susceptible and lull their minds to sleep. Her pain was his and his pain hers. They could do nothing but move on and connect on that level. In the American empire as any, they were looked at as funny by all those in pain in time of relative prosperity and dismissed as naive or self-absorbed or weak or insane. And it was true that people in times of prosperity are forced to make their own pain in the absence of cultural pain. But Will and Bella stared into each other's eyes and saw passion and strength, if not self-discipline, yet. When there's nothing to overcome but boredom, one learns to overcome oneself and desire for plain comfort. There was resignation in the conductor's voice at his stop. The words started with a burst of energy like they were carried by a backdraft, then lowered in tone and bundled up against a frigid wind. The woman, her beauty was unblemished. 54th and Cermak, doors are closing. The train was full and the doors were sent back by a body and the conductor repeated himself. Doors are closing, step inside. Please make room. Will had to step off the train before her to leave her on the train. He was already in scent on the escalator before it departed, and the man wrapped in a beige long coat above him was speaking excitedly to a larger man about the mayor in real estate, and he could see the larger man's eyes looking down, and they were tired eyes and dulled from television.